County Premier Panyaza Lusufi has unveiled an anti-crime unit that will be deployed to hostels, townships and informal settlements in the province. The unit was mentioned in his State of the Province address earlier this year and is being touted as a crack team that will combat crime in high-risk areas. The new anti-crime unit is part of the Gauteng government's efforts to address the scourge of crime and make the province safer for its citizens. SABC News reporter Mbalentle Mtetwa has more. Gauteng Premier Panyaza Lusufi has released 6,000 crime prevention wardens uh, who will be deployed to various parts of communities in and around Gauteng to try and ensure that there is more police visibility, something many residents will welcome. You will remember that they have been bemoaning the fact that they have become the target in early, in early in the mornings when they are going to work and when they return in the evening, uh, saying that there is a need for more boots on the ground. We also understand that these uh, wardens have gone through a rigorous training program and we're joined by uh, the head of department who's going to talk to us about uh, what indeed um, transpired uh, during w w what, what kind of training rather these uh, wardens went through to prepare them to uh, go into the streets and fight crime working hand in glove obviously uh, with the police and law enforcement agencies just strengthening the fight against crime. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. Now, one thing that people uh, would like to know is, you know, what went through the programming? I mean, what was done? What sort of training did the wardens that we see today go through? There are two phases. One is the physical phase. The other is the theoretical phase. The physical phase has got to do with a lot of physical training, building their strength, building their endurance, building their capabilities, but also building the issues of code of conduct, uh, discipline, respect, and the, uh, they had to actually be really trained on issues of law and order, command and control, uh, which was a very difficult switch for uh, many of our young people uh, to actually just have to follow a command and not have to ask a question because, uh, of course, when you go disobey or you have an error, you have to do, well, they'll decide, 60 push-ups and you have some kind of punishment you have to go until you understand that when a command is given because it's trying to prepare them that when you are in the midst of a scene that requires you to act, you need one commander who gives one instruction the first time you obey it and that's it. There is no time to argue. So that was very critical for them to learn, especially in terms of their code of conduct and especially in terms of issues of criminal law, in terms of uh, the issues of where their boundaries start. As peace officers, uh, the peace wardens uh, course that they did gives them the right to arrest. It gives them the right also to search and send and seizure, but it also assists them to be, work in partnership or in collaboration with other law enforcement agencies like South African Police Service and Houghton Traffic Police. But as you can see, we've got people from different corridors. So we've worked with Johannesburg uh, JMPD, we've worked with Tswani uh, Metro, we've worked with Eguruleni, and so we've been working with different uh, corridors and different metros as well. Now certainly, now when we talk about, you know, we understand that the Premier really just spoke about the fact that, you know, technology will be at the centre of this and they'll be in terms of assisting um, this law enforcement um, and to ensure that there is law enforcement. And you know, uh, uh, informal settlements are a bit tricky given that there are these small passages that make it difficult for police vehicles to then make it through in those spaces. What other equipment will these wardens be equipped with in order to ensure that they're able to carry out their duties? Will they be armed? Uh, there is a, a course, uh, by the way, there's some uh, who have come from the security industry, some of them already have uh, competency in uh, firearm uh, training and some of them already have licenses, so those will still have to take them through our own training and competency, so that's one of the training that will be ongoing and they will definitely be armed once they are competent. Remember, we're going to have specialized units and those will definitely have different ammunition in terms of in t the type of caliber of firearms that they'll need to carry will obviously be different de depending on the work that they will need to be doing. So yes, uh, they will be armed depending on the work that they will be going to do. It sounds like there's still a lot that needs to be done and your work here is not done uh, given that there are all these different units that we're going to be seeing here. Are you at least optimistic and hopeful that this will yield the kind of results that is hoped that you hope for as a department? 
uh, working with the community, working with the media, working with everybody in society. I think that we have, as government, as the Houghton Provincial Government, done our part under the leadership of Banyaza Sufi and MEC Faith Mazibugo. We've really done our part and we have to come to the party as South Africans, as citizens, as residents of the province to say we want to actually hold hands, join our, the forces and the efforts that have been done by government. And we stop pointing fingers and say, well, how can we then also add, we have force multipliers now so that our communities are safer and Houghton is a safer place. In the next 14 to 15 days, we are releasing almost 8,000 new CCTV cameras across Houghton so that there is no inch of Houghton that is not monitored by cameras so that any person that commit any crime, we can catch them in the act and we can disperse the police force to go and arrest them immediately. We are not finished, Commissioner. In the next 14 days, we are releasing almost 50 new drones so that whether it's an informal settlement, whether it's a hostel, whether it's a township, where police cars can't go in, our drones will go in and report immediately to the police so that there's no inch of our society that is not policed. We are taking this fight against criminals further. We are now entering the last stage where each and every citizen in Gauté will be armed with an e-panic button. When you are under threat in your house, you just press the panic button. Our 6,000 strong force will respond and come to a rescue immediately. We are indeed serious. Today, we are saying to all our communities in the townships, today, we are saying to all our communities in informal settlement, Today, we are saying to all our communities in hostels, when you go to bed tomorrow night, you must sleep peacefully because each and every ward will have a 24-hour patrol van guarding all our townships, informal settlement and hostels. And you are aging communities to work hand in glove with these resources.